Hi, in the previous video we took a look at repairing this Stanford Research SR650 8 pole elliptical filter I scored on eBay real cheap and it turned out to be uh, the mains filter at the back had a, a failure in it and once I fixed that well it powered up and it seemed to at least go through the motions and uh, but I was playing around with this after uh, the video after I shot the video and well yeah I noticed a few things that weren't quite right I noticed them during uh, the video things like the uh, you know it didn't sound like the relays were working and uh, you know stuff like that and the in out filter wasn't sort of working and well yeah a few things that hinted that there might be something more wrong with this and uh, some people also noticed in the video a few strange things which I found in here as well so there's more to the story here it's not just the mains filter we've got more to fix here mmm beauty let's take a look at it now one thing I noticed and also a few uh, eagle-eyed viewers noticed this as well check out this regulator in the back here it's a 7805 5 volt uh, regulator and look it's got a sill pad on it one of those insulating sill pads but there's no matching heatsink and also it looks like it's had the screw in there so somebody has taken that heatsink off at some point why and I eventually noticed as did a few eagle-eyed viewers that uh, the display was dimming on this thing and even one person noted at the same time the fan was actually ramping up so we may or may not be able to uh, actually see that here but the this display will eventually dim after a few minutes and well that ain't right and the fan actually speeds up and gets louder so why would a LED display like this dim? Well, all of the digital stuff in here, I believe, is uh, powered from 5 volts. It's pretty obvious that's the case. Probably that 5 volt regulator that doesn't have the damn heatsink on it, because I think that's the only 5 volt regulator in here. Oh, there we go. There we go. It's dimmed. It's dimmed. There we go. So the only re I better turn that off. That's that's not a good thing, okay? But the only reason that would dim is if the voltage rail actually dips. I mean, if the voltage rail goes up, the display brightness is going to increase. So that 5 volt rail must be dipping. Now, the digital board at the back here, uh, as I said, has its own 5 volt rail and also all of the displays on the front. Uh, those displays will be multiplexed uh, too, of course. They have to be. There's not enough uh, wires coming through to display all the segments, but they're multiplexed. But they will be going through dropper resistors and the uh, effective brightness is going to depend of, on the power value of those dropper resistors and the fixed 5 volt rail in here. So, they, that voltage rail must be dropping. So let's take a look at it and measure it. First, we'll have a quick look at the power supply section here. Now, the transformer's over here, secondary of the transformer going over here, and we've got some voltage regulators, obviously not dissipating much uh, power at all. They're just freestanding, got a tiny little pissant heatsink on these things. So, but really, because they're only driving all the analog circuitry. Now, what we've got here is because we've got two different analog boards in this thing, all with their own separate taps, separate isolated, because everything in this is isolated. So the 5 volt digital board will have its own tap and its own bridge rectifier and filter cap and likewise for the two different supplies we've got uh, plus minus um, I think I don't know whether it's plus minus 12 or plus minus 15 but anyway um, split uh, supply and we've got an LM317 and an LM337 for one analog board and another matching 317 and 337 for the other board and that's our 5 volt voltage regulator as I said with the heatsink missing that's a 7805 this one next to it is actually a uh, tip uh, power transistor I believe that's uh, driving the fan so that's pretty much all we have on the regulation side of things really quite simple now, of course, a power supply issues like this and power supply dipping will explain some of the stuff we saw in the previous video, like the relays uh, potentially not uh, working if they don't have enough energy to operate the relays. So maybe it's not just the 5 volt rail, uh, the relays, because the relays will be on the analog uh, boards here. So maybe the analog rails are out too. But anyway, let's stick to the 5 volt rail. I'm measuring the 5 volt rail uh, with the meter here. Let's power it on and see what we get. Here we go. 4.99, everything's fine. Hello. Hello. It's ramping down. It's ramping down. <laughs> and we might actually see... This is interesting. 
There we go. It's ramping down. We might start seeing a dip on the display if it goes too low. I mean, you know, it's still not an issue at the moment. I mean, you know, still within that uh, nominal 5 volt uh, spec you'd expect of a 5 volt rail. So 4.75, here we go. Whoa, 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 it's dropping. It's dropping. Should see the display dim. Holy, it's going. I mean, the digital, the process is still working. Even though it's way outside, it's under its uh, nominal 4.75. Well, there's something seriously going on there. <laughs> to give the digital credit, it's still working. <laughs> the process is still working at 3.9. Now, of course, that's pretty much the kind of thing that you'd expect if your regulator is uh, overheating and uh, dropping out. You'd expect funny business like that so you know how it started off at the uh, five volts and then it ramped down well that's of course when it first powers on the die is just fine it's you know it's uh, drawing the same amount of current as it later but it hasn't had a chance to really heat up yet so once it does bingo it starts dropping so we need to whack as a first order we need to whack a heat sink back on there now based on the uh, I'm not sure of the original size heatsink that was on there, but hey, there's physical limits to how big it could have actually been. Uh, likely to be very similar to one of these, probably slightly bigger, but it can't be very wide because there's that uh, power transistor next to it. Can't be very tall because of the wiring. Can't stick out much because we've got a TO92 there and other stuff. So really, I'll have a rummage around and see what I've got in terms of heatsink. But why is it missing? Like, did it? I can't believe that it just you know it came loose through vibration or some other thing it's like somebody's deliberately taken the bloody heat sink off i don't really have much uh, choice here i've got a i've got a couple of uh, these clip on uh, type heat sinks but they're not uh, very good you know what are they 40 degrees c per watt or something horrible like that i've got this uh, large-ish one it's quite uh, it's quite thin but that would probably do the business if i can uh, squeeze that in there i've got a a screw on uh one with a threaded hole but that uh yeah it could probably uh, maybe screw that on but you can't get the screw into the back of that thing you can't actually get access i might have to take the filter out again to get a, a screw through there oh it's all looking a bit yeah i don't know i'll try and squeeze this one in see what that does i'm not sure of the specs of that that's like you know, maybe 15, 20 degrees C per watt, but hey, it should do it. Because ultimately, it shouldn't need much uh, heat sinking because it's just powering the digital circuitry here. Uh, Z80 processor for those uh, playing along at home and your ROM and your RAM and your GPIB interface with your National Instruments chipset and really not much else at all to actually power it. So not a huge requirement. And you can tell from the design of the thing that A, it's freestanding and B, there's not much room around it to put a heatsink and they didn't design a, a PCB mounted heatsink in there with the uh, studs in the bottom like that one, for example. So they didn't you know, design that in. So it, you know, it must not be dissipating much power at all, but with absolutely no heatsink, Clearly, it's not enough. I wouldn't have expected it to fail so quickly, overheat so quickly, though, with no heat sink. I sort of maybe, you know, expected a bit more margin in there, but, oh, well, that's what it's doing. So let's put the heat sink on and see what happens. So there you go. That's the best I could do with the heat sinks to hand. I might be able to find a more optimum one if I could salvage it from an old board or something like that. But it just wedged in there right next to the power transistor here. It's not shorted uh, out there to the tab of the other transistor you just have to be aware of that and i just bent over the to220 there but you know you can't imagine there being much of a bigger original heatsink in there so that's got to do the job unless of course there's some other uh, something else on the digital circuit actually loading down the regulator hey we don't know yet let's just power it back up see if we get that sort of same uh, ramping effect and let's measure the temperature of the heatsink all right let's power it up again There we go, 4.991, and holding. Expect it to maybe drop a smidgen as it starts to warm up, but shouldn't get that uh, runaway effect that we got last time. And, well, yeah, it's holding steady, so two of your thumbs. Keep going. We need to get in there and measure the heatsink, but I'll leave that on for like uh, five minutes and uh, see how... See how warm that gets. Yeah, it's dropping a tad, but 
no big deal. Probably should measure the input voltage too. Now it's curious, I did get the speed up of that fan again, but uh, our supply hasn't dropped, so there's no correlation there. So it might have a temp sensor in it, that's why it looks like, uh, based on one track I saw, it looks like that power transistor's driving the fan. So um, yeah, it could, it could have a temp, temp sensor and then just uh, PWMs the fan and controls the speed of it. And also the problem I was getting last time of this uh, AC-DC coupling switch here not driving the relay, well, yeah, you should be able to hear that. That now works along with the one over here and we're not getting that uh, overload thing we were getting before. So <laughs> clearly that uh, 5 volt rail was just yeah causing all sorts of issues. But we need to go through, of course, systematically measure all the other uh, rails. It's probably been on for like five minutes now. Haven't measured the uh, temperature yet, but it's holding in there just fine as you'd expect. So uh, yeah, that's the biggest heat sink you could uh, imagine on that uh, originally fitted to that device so it's obviously holding in there f fine there's no other overloads on the rail uh, that we're aware of and we've got our relay back there's still no relay action for the uh, filter here but that could just be a mux uh, to bypass it may not actually be a relay in there for that and we're looking at an actual uh, tab temperature on the TO220 there of you know it's it's getting upwards of 70 degrees or thereabouts so yeah, it's it's not preferable, but it's it's not that bad at all. So yeah, there's certainly no uh, gross overload condition there. And the analog LM317 there is actually uh, higher. Look at that, 72.4. And if we go over here, we're looking at for the 337, the other rail. You'd expect it to be uh, pretty well matching. And yeah, I mean, geez, that's not great at all. This is pretty piss poor thermal design in this thing. I mean, if you design this thing properly, it wouldn't even need a damn fan. And we'll just measure our 5 volt rail there. Yeah, it looks pretty clean, no worries. And uh, we can go in there and AC couple that if we want and have a look. 5 millivolts per division. There we go. Not a drama whatsoever. So that 5 volt rail is just running hunky-dory. And we'll just check the input voltage to the regulator, see if it's uh, well designed, or see if there's any filtering issues. And, well, the filter looks uh, reasonable, you know, we've got about a 1 volt uh, ripple on there. And 2 volts per division, we're looking at 2, 4, 6, 8. Well, it's peaking around 9 there. Well, that's a little bit high, especially when you haven't designed in a proper heatsink in there, and that's why it's running at that temperature. I would have you know, drop that down to about 8, but then that's not uh, counting for ageing of the cap and uh, uh, stuff like that as it loses its, uh, as it dries out with age and things like that, you'd expect uh, to get more ripple on there, but yeah, that's why it's running a bit hot, but it's certainly not, you know, crazy out in the ballpark, like 12 volts or something like that, so that's not too bad. And we'll measure the uh, LM317 rails, and th these are really annoying because there's no voltage test points on this board at all. It's really damn annoying. You've got to figure it out uh, for yourself, and you can't see the traces because they're on the bottom. And I had to buzz a few things out and use a bit of common sense, and I finally found the ground point on there, and ah, it's just ridiculous. Anyway, that's our output voltage of the LM317, and that's around about, we're 5 volts per division, it's around about 15 and a half volts or thereabouts, and the input voltage, if I can get in there, and yeah, there we go, there's our input voltage, so, you know, 5, 10, 15, 20, whoa, geez, look at that, that's really overkill, and the ripple doesn't matter a rats, but yeah, that's Pretty gross overkill for a 15 volt rail. No wonder they're getting that thing up to 70 degrees. Unbelievable. We're getting exactly the same on the negative rail too. Check it out. You know, around about that 22, 24 volts, something like that. Nuts. So unfortunately, yeah, EV blog curse again. It's incredibly simple, nothing complex. I was hoping like a regulator would have been blowing at least something, but no. Anyway, all it was was a missing heatsink. Why that heatsink was missing, I don't know. Absolute mystery. Ridiculous. Didn't find it inside the box. I don't know. Somebody's been playing around with this thing. It's ridiculous. Anyway, uh, we're getting our AC and DC coupling on there properly. We've measured all the uh, voltage rails, the plus minus 15 volt rails on both analog boards. Uh, we measured the input to make sure that the ripple is uh, well above the minimum dropout voltage of the regulators. And uh, yeah, pretty piss poor design in there. Not that happy with that 
uh, at all. The margins in there, maybe um, they might be slightly different because I've got, uh, I'm running over 240 volts here in the lab, uh, uh, like a 245 or something nominal, I think, here in the lab. So uh, quite a high supply voltage. So mine might be on the high side of the margin, that's for sure. Or they certainly will be, but yeah, anyway, not that pleased with the uh, power supply thermal design of this thing. Pretty poor. As I said, they could have done away with that fan, mounted, designed the uh, uh, power supply properly in there, mounted on some big aluminium blocks down to the chassis or something, and really, this thing doesn't consume a huge amount of power, so you could easily get away with uh, putting those things to the chassis and having this a completely fanless design. It's just no excuse for it. It's just, uh, it's just poor form. It really is laziness. So I'm going to have to do some more work uh, testing this thing, but we can do, you know, the AC and DC coupling works a treat now, it seems to. The relays, I haven't actually measured it, but uh, we can go up in the input gain. Notice the overload lead slightly starts to com come on at the maximum gain. We can actually uh, make that go away. Put a terminator on the input here, because we've got channel A selected, and bang, it's gone. And similar thing on B, we can go over and we can test B. Look at that. Beautiful. If we can go A minus B here, the differential input mode, we're still overloading. We'll need a second terminator on there. Ah, look at that. Bob's your uncle. What a Bobby Dazzler. I love it. It's a winner. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that little follow-up video, even though, sorry, there wasn't much happening there at all. What a bummer. Anyway, just a missing heatsink. Meh. Hope you enjoyed it. Catch you next time.